I'm Caroline Bradley. Welcome to the Marriage Challenge podcast brought to you by Care for the Family. It's great to have you with us. I'm delighted to be joined by Phil and Lorraine Emerson who are going to share their experiences of marriage after widowhood and some of the challenges that this has brought to their relationship. But before we get into all that, let me introduce them. Phil and Lorraine have been married for 10 years. Phil works as a church leader and Lorraine is a learning disability nurse. Phil has four children from his first marriage and together they have one son. Phil and Lorraine, welcome. It's absolutely great to have you with us. It's good to be. We're looking forward to it. Great. Well, look, we love at the start of our chats just to hear how you actually met and how you ended up married. Well, Phil Phil was my minister and um, he suddenly started to contact me and (laughs) (laughs) we went for a few walks and... The rest is history. The rest is history. (laughs) Sounds like a great way to start a relationship. Good friendship. So today we're going to look at the topic of marriage after widowhood. Would you be able to tell us a little about your story? Yeah, I well, I suppose I, I've been married for twenty-seven, just over twenty-seven years, to Jill. Um, we had four kids, and at that time, two grandkids. And Jill died mm. of adult death syndrome, which is like like um, adult cot death. Mm. So there was no no illness. There was no. It was sudden. It was traumatic. It was um, literally um, going to bed one night. It just it was as sudden as switching a light out. So um, so it was very traumatic, very dark, dark period of of my life, and that's where um, I suppose my journey of grief began. Mm. That was a real sudden change for your circumstances. Totally. And obviously then you, you met, um, and how long after that did you both meet and get married? Um, but about it, it was about six months after that that um, I was still in a really dark place. I, I suppose our, our journey is quite unique in that I think Lorraine often thank God she was a nurse um, Mm because I think she was very understanding and she was probably a big role in my healing Mm -hmm. so we started to walk together talk together coffee together and and she just became a great instrument in my healing Mm -hmm. in that journey for me not fair to say yeah and I suppose at that time as well the whole church were still grieving for for Jill so you know part of me was was in that process mm. and um yeah it's a pretty that was a journey you walked together yeah mm. pretty unique situation really so when you went uh, after a, a while and, and you did get married what were some of the challenges the fact that you'd been widowed previously phil what did that bring in what's some, some of the challenges that you faced as a couple then um i think n- number one i probably didn't realize i still was as broken as it was um, I felt when, well, I often say I felt when I got married, I felt like I was two people in one body. So again, Lorraine was great. She was so understanding and helpful. And because, I think because I got married again, you'd sort of, you're, you had to almost hide your, your grief. Your grief became very inward and very personal. So it became, Lorraine was, was, was great at helping me process that in those early days. Our, our our kids, my, my kids, you know, were grown up, two were married, two weren't, but they were all adult. And um, it was journeying with them as well, which was uh, pretty difficult at times. So what were those challenges like for you, Lorraine? Well, I suppose for me, um, the fact that Phil had four grown up children, you know, how would they react to their dad being married again, you know? You know what would they um, feel towards me? You know, would would we bond? Mm-hmm. You know, how would it work? But thankfully, you know, we we you know we've had a journey, but we, you know, we get on really well and we have good relationships. That's great. And and how did you overcome some of those challenges? I think I think one of the big things I remember Lorraine saying to me in those early days. She said, "Look." I remember saying, saying, Phil, I will never be your kid's mum, nor I'm ever going to strive to be. And the best thing I can pray and hope for is that I be their best friend. 
and that was I always I've never forgot her saying that, and I think that's what what really helped us to work. Lorraine never tried to be what she wasn't. She never tried to be a mum to them. She just was a great friend to them, and and I think their friendship's pretty unique. You know, it's, and what were the keys for for you as a couple? Well, for us as a couple, you know, staying close, you know, communication was key. Um, just talking stuff through, um, but always, yeah, checking mm. in with each other and you know talking things out. Yeah, yeah. My 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 thirty year old son keeps Lorraine going all the time about being his stepmom, you know, type of thing. You know, sort of almost jokes using the. The, the little phrase, so it's it's been great. I have to say the relationship's great. Yeah. And what would be uh, an encouragement or an, an advice that you would give to a couple who would find themselves in the similar kind of situation of a second marriage? I think really communicating to the proper people. So for me, um, it was really important that my kids came on the journey with me. So even prior to us getting married, you know, long conversations with them together and with them um, on their own. I was conscious of um, Jill's dad had died, but her mom and sister, um, I was, I kept them. I felt it was really important that they understood where I was. And so I think communication and being honest and open about your feelings. Yeah. And um, that, that was a big, big plus. So obviously it was a big challenge having those wider family relationships as well. How yeah. did you manage to navigate those, Lorraine, with Phil having two mother-in-laws? How lucky am I? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, Phil had a, a good relationship with with Jill's mother and still does to this day. I mean, he still orders her oil. <laughs> you know, I think he really likes having two mother-in-laws. Mm. But um, I think one of, the, one of the great things was to, again, I'm thinking, you know, some of the things that Lorraine said that still stick in my mind. You know, um, Lorraine has never had an issue with, um, she, 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 she said to me way back in the early days, you know, with having four kids, she knew that Jill's name and photographs were probably going to be paramount to our relationship because you know she's going to walk into my kids' houses and see their photo or photo up. And so I think that was great. Lorraine was brilliant at that of, of of accepting that that was going to be part of who we are and our, even our marriage. You know, so that's a, a big thing, isn't it? Yeah. Knowing and accepting that reality. Yes. yes. Anything particular that helped you find that place of acceptance, Lorraine? It was just it was just being real, you know, um, you know about the situation and just being again honest and open and just talking things through and yeah. I think I think one of the things Lorraine I think one of her big qualities is she, she's quite independent even though she doesn't admit that something, <laughs> but she's very independent. Um, and so there was no, I, I, I think that that strong personality give her the ability to be able to do that so a real sense of herself uh, in yeah, the middle of it it's just herself and I think that that's what's made it work she's never tried to be somebody else she's never tried to be Jill she's never tried to be anybody else she's just very strong in who she is so I think that's been a big plus you know so what's your secret as a couple of building a strong marriage for, for yourselves Short breaks, <laughs> often as often as possible. <laughs> Brilliant. Get, getting the odd night away, going out for a meal, just taking time out together. Yeah. Communication. And communication. Yeah. yeah. Setting those intentional Kate. date times. Intentional. Yeah. It's so easy, isn't the it? The busyness of life to, yeah. to miss doing those. I uh -huh. think it's so important, you know, just a, an honest communication. You know, even on a on a regular basis. I think one of the things that we've learned is just to keep short accounts. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's just it's just talking often, and I think we both. I I think one of the big things is that we both probably the same love language, which is great. You know, so quality time uh, with each other is both our love language, mm. which is really important to think. And that yeah. makes it really easy when you're both looking for that quality uh -huh, time. Yeah. It's not an effort to yeah. get the other one. No, yeah. that's brilliant. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I'm sure in the busyness of life, that's hard to find. 
So any tips on how a couple can get quality time together in the madness of our world today and the demands of work? And As you said, be intentional. Plan ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, that's key. Uh, and I think too. Otherwise, for, it'll not happen. That's true. And for my lifestyle, which is, and both our lifestyles are very busy, we we plan it in the dairy, which is really important. So we we put those in the dairy first. Block it out. So we, we yeah. So we, <laughs> we you, you know we we work out of almost like work out of rest, which is good. Brilliant. That's fantastic. Well, look, those are really key things that you've shared with us. And thank you for sharing your story. Um, it's really, really helpful for us to take time to re be reminded on what really helps a couple build a strong marriage. Um, one of the things we love to do is ask a couple to set a challenge for all the couples who are listening today to, to get involved and do in the coming months. So would you like to set a challenge for our listeners today? Yeah, well, I think one of the things is, is uh, again, communication, not to be afraid to, to say the little the three little magic words, I love you, and I think they're important. They have to be a daily dose, you know, where we're telling each other we love each other every day. Um, and as Lorraine says, we both love little breaks a night or a couple of nights away. They don't have to be massively expensive, but, you know, just where you can go and, and chill and... Um, Premier Inns are the most wonderful thing ever invented. So. <laughs> I think that's a great challenge, isn't it? Mm. Say those three little words every day for the yeah. next month. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Lorraine and Phil. It's great, and I'm sure our couples will be encouraged as they've listened. Um, so that's all for this episode. It just leaves me to say thank you to mm -hmm. Phil and Lorraine again for joining us and sharing their insights. We look forward to tackling another marriage challenge next time. You have been listening to the Marriage Challenge podcast. For further information about our courses, resources and events, visit us at www.careforthefamily.org.uk.